Hey there, I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you a story and philosophy, and that is how Iron Man, doing Iron Man races, uh, made me a better business person. And the truth is, is over the last few years, triathlon and specifically Iron Man distance races have literally pushed me to a level and so many of you guys have asked me to share that journey and my takeaways and kind of what are the the new philosophies and beliefs that I've adopted through that training process so that's what I want to share with you be sure to stay with the end because the other question I get asked all the time is what are my favorite business books I'm going to tell you how to get access to the complete list that I shared with my cousin who was just starting off in business and I sat down and did the work to write out all the different books and why they were so important. I wanna give you that as a gift, but let's get into it. So my journey to Ironman wasn't like I woke up one day or I put it on my vision board and I was like, I wanna do an Ironman. It was literally a reluctant journey. You know, for me, I always judge people wearing spandex on road bikes. Don't don't get mad at me, I apologize. I'm one of those people now, but there was just something about me growing up as a skateboarder and a snowboarder that anytime I saw grown men riding around in, in spandex, I just thought, that's weird. I'm not, that's that's not me. I don't, I, okay, maybe they're having fun. Um, and, and so much so that I didn't even want a road bike until I was in my 30s. Like I literally was, I'd ran, I always ran, I was like, you know, I ran marathons and, you know, I'd run 5K, 10K with friends. And it was kind of my thing. If I go to a new city, I'd ask, you know, who's interested in going for a run. It was a great way to see the city, but I wasn't into biking and I couldn't swim. Okay. So like none of those things, even my best friend, Nick always had it on his vision board. Someday he just wrote Kona, Ironman Kona. Like you gotta understand, we were not fit. We, we never done anything long distance. This was like such a crazy thing for even him to say. I remember hearing him saying that going like, that's nuts. Like, does he realize how much work would be required? And I mean, I'm looking at this guy. He's not the healthiest looking dude at the time. And, but yeah, he just kept saying like, that's my, you know, maybe when I have more time, maybe when, you know, the business gets to a certain level, maybe when the kids are a little older, like this will be a thing. And what happened was, is we, uh, we ended up um, going for a run one day. And one of my buddies, Jarrett says, you know, you should really get a road bike. I just bought a bike. Nick's got a bike. And I was like, oh man. And, and his neighbor, Tim was selling his bike. So I said, well, whatever, whatever Tim wants, I'll just, is Tim's bike good enough? He's like, yeah. I was like, cool, I'll just buy Tim's bike. <laughs> and literally the first time I ever showed up, I'm wearing like workout shorts and a t-shirt, helmet on a road bike, you know, position. And they're all like in their shorts and whatever outfits. And we go for a 20K bike ride. And it, and it was actually a lot of fun. It was just sunny outside, early morning cool roly poly type of hills. And then after the bike ride, we ended up doing a 5K run. And on the run, Jared says to me, hey, if we did a, I think it was like a 650 meter swim, right? Not far, you know, not, <laughs> it's crazy. I say that today, incredibly far for me at the time. I shouldn't even said that. This is, this is the whole philosophy of this, this content is, you know, sometimes things you do just seem so small at the time. But anyway, 650, felt like forever. I was like, that's almost a kilometer. I haven't even swam 10 meters. How would I do that? And, um, and there was a race coming up, a sprint triathlon, and uh, we committed to it. And I remember we went, a few days later, we went into the pool and Nick swam to the other end. He had to stop, hold himself on the ledge, then swam back. We're talking 50 meters. I swam, I think four times. And I was like, how many times do we need to swim to equivalent to sprint triathlons? And it was like, I don't know, 16 or something like that. And I was like, holy moly, we're gonna drown. This is an open water ocean swim, okay? It wasn't a pool swim. But we had, I think, five weeks to figure it out. We bought the books, we watched the YouTube videos, and that started the journey. We did that race, then we did a second sprint, and then it was the year later we decided to do our first half distance Ironman. COVID happens, all the races get canceled, and we decided to keep doing it. We hired a crew, we hired a race team, we told Ironman we were doing this. They actually were like super supportive. They sent us a whole bag of swag and we did the race. There was five of us. We did our own unsupported, unofficial, we called it Corona Man race. And then as soon as we were done, couldn't even enjoy it for 10 seconds, our coach says, next year we're doing a full distance. So we did a 70.3, next year we're doing a 140.6. Just so y'all know, a 140.6 is 
3,800 meter swim, 3.8 kilometers, 180 kilometer bike ride, and then a full uh, marathon, 42.2 kilometer uh, marathon back to back. And it was crazy, just training and training and training. And then I, I crashed on my bike. I got hit by a car. I, I cut my wheel, my heel open. I'm actually gonna slice in the video of that whole journey just so you guys can get a sense of what I went through uh, last year and that whole journey because it's gonna share. Um, these are the lessons I took from that moment. And we ended up doing the race and I finished 12 hours, 12 minutes. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I'm doing it again this year. And there's just something about it that I wanna share with all of you guys to, to hopefully inspire you. It doesn't matter if you're you know, just getting off your couch trying to do your first 5K or you're just trying to get back to the gym or you're rehabbing an injury or whatever it is. Wherever you're at, I wanna encourage you to do something. Sweat a little bit every day. Every day that will build momentum. But here's, here's some of the big takeaways for me. Number one is work ahead of the big moment. So what do I mean by that? The thing that I found most fascinating with triathlon racing and racing in general is by the time the race comes, all of the hard work was already done. There's nothing left to do other than race. So a lot of people think like, okay, I got, I got to get ready for this moment. And in, in that moment, I'm going to like, rah, and that's going to be the thing. But the truth is, is if you train properly, all the hard work, the heavy lifting, that all happened before the training camps, the big weekends, literally like I pretty much did equivalent in a four day uh, weekend, double the amount of volume for the, the race, right? Just, just like, but not all at the same time, right? Let your body recover, do some more volume, uh, you know, push your muscles, push your endurance, work different parts of your energy systems. And it's so cool to know that, the, the, that you prep for the moment. And I think in business, this is, this is what I have to remind my team, this is what I remind all my coaching clients, is the work you're doing today is getting you ready to be the person who can deal with the next set of challenges. You don't realize it. Wh whatever's going on today, it's the sharpening the saw, it's designing the process, it's hiring the right people, it's being fiscally responsible, it's, it's, it's crafting your campaigns, it's all the things you're doing today. All of that is getting you ready to be able to take advantage of the opportunity when it shows up. When race day happens, all the work was done, I've got one job today and that's to race. It's just to focus and smile. That is one of my favorite things my coach said to me. He said, smile, smile, smile. He says, I don't have the data to prove it, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna make you faster. And he's right. At minimum, I get everybody else smiling. I smile at every person I'm going by and we're gonna have some fun. Race day's here, don't have to stress. All the heavy work was done. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. And in business, it's the exact same thing. So when you're going through stuff, when you're doing the work, when you're putting in the reps in your business, just know it's because you're getting ready for the moment when you're gonna be needed. Number two, 360 review. So one of the things that's unique, I think, to triathlon and maybe there's, you know, like decathlons and other stuff is the multiple disciplines. And what I love about the multiple disciplines, it's not even the bike swimming and running. And, and you know, for me, swimming, learning to swim, I just recently did a cross lake swim and it was uh, 4,200 meters, the longest swim I've ever done, lake to, like across the lake that I live on. I just, I kept looking at it and go, someday I'm gonna cross this lake and I did it. So not only is it the disciplines, but it's also the other parts of it. It's the recovery, it's the hydration, it's the fueling. And when you, when, when you start doing these longer distance triathlons, you realize it's not just that one discipline, it's everything around it, it's the 360 review. It's where do you have a deficit because your ability to perform is gonna be directly correlated to your weakest deficit. So if you wanna have a great Ironman time, but you can't swim very strong, you gotta work on your swim. If you can't run very good, you gotta work on your run. If you have a weak bike, you gotta work on your bike. That's gonna have such an impact. Some people, it's transition time. Some people is they don't know to hydrate properly. You know, a lot of people see these, you know, finishes where you have an athlete at the end of the race and they're just wobbling and breaking down and some of them fall to the ground. Some of them fall to the ground right before the finish line and they don't finish and then they get passed by everybody and people go, oh my gosh, that must've been so hard. He, he, he like suffered so much. But the truth is, is it could have just been a fuel or hydration problem. Meaning that back when he started, he felt so good, he didn't consume enough calories. He didn't drink enough water. He didn't bring in enough electrolytes. And what happens is the human body can't replenish those things. You burn, you know, for me, 800 calories an hour. My body can only consume 400. So if I forget to fuel, 
If I forget to take in the electrolytes, it's very hard for my, uh, my GI system, my digestive system to make up for it. And then it compounds, especially when you start looking at these, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 hour races, you can't make it up and that's what happens. Just like in business. If you neglect the code base, if you neglect your marketing, if you neglect the culture, if you neglect the, mar the marketing system, all these things, your sales culture, your sales training, if you ne neglect these 360 area of your business, then you're gonna wake up one day and have a major fault, a major problem in that area of the business, and it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna cause you a setback. Hopefully it doesn't take you out of the race, but it's gonna require you to stop, reassess, regroup, fix the problem, fix the weakness so that you can keep driving forward. And that's what I love about triathlon, the 360 review. Number three, mental toughness. I think anybody that even just considers or attempts to do anything like an Ironman, and honestly, any physical endurance, they'll quickly realize that the work is up here. It's the real estate in between the ears that's the most valuable. I've, I've known friends that are incredibly talented athletes, but the mental game gets to them. Their ability to push themselves past what they believe their body can do is what stops them from performing and getting beat by other people that have a stronger mental fortitude. One of the quotes amongst many that I look to is that we wanna do hard things until hard things become easy. Right? That's why I said earlier, and I kind of stopped myself because 650 meter swim at the time felt like forever distance. Like that's crazy. Now that's like not even, that's kind of a warm up when I go to the pool. Right. And it's just, again, do hard things until hard things become easy. But more importantly, especially as it comes to business is in business, we want to create challenges on ourselves, not through the business. The business will do that automatically because we wanna become stronger, right? And there's this, this great you know, philosophy that, you know, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times. And if you want to push yourself, you wanna create something special in the world, you wanna build this empire, okay? You wanna shine your light as, as, as bright as possible. You're gonna to have to do hard things because doing those hard things will make you stronger. Steel sharpens steel. You know, no pressure, no diamonds. And when I was doing that race, the full distance Ironman, okay? And I'm on the marathon portion of this and it's 100 Fahrenheit outside, okay? 30 something Celsius. And we're literally going aid station to aid stations, putting ice on us, making sure we don't dehydrate, making sure we don't pass out from the heat. And it's like the last 13 kilometers, I mean, it was crazy. And what I had to go to, where I learned there was another gear for me that I've used in my business since then, is the big bag of whys. The big bag of whys. And I just kept thinking this to myself because I knew if I had to go to that dark place where it got that tough, the pain cave, that I needed a why that was, that was gonna pull me forward. And what I did is I made a list of every person that ever passed away in my life from my friend Mandy, to my buddy Kevin, to my, my uncle Daniel, to Scott, to all these people that I knew, regardless of how much pain I was in in that moment, that their family or themselves would trade spaces with me without a question. And I just ran for them. I kept lifting my feet for them. I just kept going. I literally would cycle through the big bag of whys. I'd just go, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. I'm not gonna walk. I'm not gonna walk. I'm just gonna keep going. And that pulled me through. And I've used this so many times in my business. You know, I have a whole list. I have a, I have a note file that's got all these reasons why I do what I do so that when it gets tough, when it gets challenging, I go to that list and I remind myself the why. Because if, if you're so focused and you're in the forest and you don't step back to look, or you're in the trees and you don't step back to look at the forest, you might forget why you started in the first place. And then you make it all about yourself and you get super self-centered and you spiral down. I wanna encourage you to make it about other people. Look externally to you. And when your business life gets tough, go to your big bag of whys. That's what I wanna invite you to do and that to me will be a game changer for you. 
So quick recap, three big lessons on how Iron Man made me a better entrepreneur. Number one is work ahead of the big moment. When the race happens, all the heavy lifting is done. Number two, 360 review, look for your weak spot and fix them. And number three, your mental toughness side of it, look for your big bag of whys. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you my number one resource, my top 25 entrepreneurial books, handpicked, selected, I actually originally designed this for my cousin, he was a young entrepreneur, 17 years old, starting a business. He asked me, what book should I read? And I was like, one book? There's so many. So I literally sat there on a flight, two hours of just like collecting all my thoughts and putting down why I think this book in this order and this sequence, and I put in my category and is my gift to you. So click the link below to download your copy of my top entrepreneurial books. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next week.